recording um, so that the content is actually there for those who couldn't make it live. I just wanted to first ask, is there anybody here who has recruited since COVID started? So in the last 12 months or so, 12 to 13 months, if there's anyone here who has recruited ever since um, COVID started, like raise your hand or unmute yourself or something. Um, I was kind of banking on Teresa being here, but I bet you the baby is not cooperating. So uh, that's okay. But I was going to ask you guys, like, where did your last recruit come from? So even if you are watching the replay, just keep in mind where your last recruit come from. Sabrina, have you sponsored in the last 12 to 13 months? I just saw you pop on camera. Yeah, can you unmute yourself if you can? If your situation allows it. Yes. <laughs> um, it was a friend that was a consultant, uh, a, a customer, longtime customer, and she joined. Um, I can't remember exactly when. I know it's been in the last year, but I it kind of just blurs. Yeah. The year is a blur. <laughs> Literally seven days a week blurs um, into each other. But yeah, so and other teammates of mine have sponsored. So my downline has sponsored too. So right. it's not just me directly. It's a few of my teammates have also brought people in. I know one girl was May of last year, and then there was a couple in June. So it's been waves, right? Of not just me, but my whole team has done this. Right, which is totally normal, right? So, yeah. so your last recruit was a customer. So she did she join because she yeah. loved the products, probably? Yeah. Yeah. She's been a customer a long time of mine, and uh, I got her. She hostess kit. I think she got it for like 20 bucks. It's the best. Including taxes and everything, so. It's the best. Literally, the host kit is the best. Okay, thanks for sharing. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on my content, which is really just... <laughs> really quick notes jotted down from my like thoughts today um because i had lots of thoughts about this and i just wanted to make sure that i didn't um i wasn't completely scrambled but um basically what was requested from last week if you were here last week was a recruiting topic so i asked what you guys want to hear about um everyone was like yep recruiting we're down with that and then i think patience it was said can you also <laughs> talk about how to actually get them certified after we recruit them because of course if we're going after the incentive we need we don't just need tvs right we need them to actually be successful so I actually made this topic why you're not recruiting because we've done a few like how to recruit things over the last few years. So I decided to talk about why people aren't joining your team to sort of like flip that mindset a little bit. So if you have any tips personally, uh, if you have anything to say, you guys know the rules and the rules are <laughs> interrupt me whenever you want. Okay. Um, so the first one, and this is going to sound so like, duh, but why you're not recruiting or why people aren't joining your team is because you're not consistently doing the things, okay? I recruit on average about one a month, but that doesn't mean I recruit one a month, okay? My recruiting usually goes two to three months with nothing and then three to four people. So it just, it just like in, like in one month, right? So it literally, just like Sabrina just said, it literally goes like this in my business. And if I'm being totally transparent with you guys, the months that I'm not recruiting and the months that I'm not actually seeing that growth of teammates are the same months I'm not partying consistently, okay? I'm not following up consistently. I'm not offering great customer service. I'm not um, intentionally building relationships with those around me. I'm not like actively meeting new people. I'm just like, like if someone comes to me, I'm cool with that, but I'm not actually trying to go out there and actually do those things. So if you're not recruiting, it's probably because you're not consistently doing the things. And now you might tell me, well, Kate, I had a party this month or I've talked to three people this month. That's not consistent, okay? There's 30 days on average in a month. Um, you need to be doing more of those things consistently if you would like to actually see recruits, okay? Um, is there any questions about that? That was basically the first one and it's very basic. So all of these points are gonna be pretty short, you guys, because recruiting isn't complicated. So these points that I'm going to give you are going to be super simple, all right? Um, you probably aren't 
actually, I will guarantee that you aren't <laughs> talking to enough people consistently. There's that C word again, right? Um, patients just said, I'm going to call you out. I'm sorry, patients, just who I am. Um, but she just said that she talked to two people so far. She's had two no's. I think that that's what I heard. Um, that's not enough people, right? If you want to have one recruit, you need to be talking to at least 20 people. So statistics say, and I said this last week too, if you want one person interested in even hearing more, <clears throat> you need to talk to about 10 people. So I need a drink. But that doesn't mean like that person will say yes. My allergies have actually been like really bad the last couple of days. So my throat is actually like <coughs> really dry. Um, so even talking to the 10 people and then that one person replies to you, <laughs> right? Which not everyone does. That one person might reply to you or that one person might go, oh, and they, they might ask more questions about it. It does not guarantee that that one person is going to join. <laughs> Just chugging with the whole bottle, Tony. <laughs> I do have wine that looks like this cup. Okay, just so you know what the difference is. With a nice black licorice finish. Um, <laughs> so you need to be talking to more people. And that's honestly where it comes down to. So I'm going to give you honestly, like obviously more tips around this kind of stuff. But you could be doing all of the rest of it, right? And just not talking to enough people, which is really where almost everybody runs into this problem. And I talked about this last week too, and I think even a couple of weeks ago, that most people get it inside their own head that they suck at recruiting because they're not recruiting, right? Like we've, we've literally all been there. And if you've told me that you're not there, <laughs> you're a liar. So most people have told ourselves that like we're bad at recruiting when in actuality, we just aren't talking to enough people. We're not even giving ourselves the opportunity to be good at recruiting because we just haven't got there yet. If you think that one of every three people are going to say yes to joining your team, like you are disillusioned. And that's not, <laughs> that's not a me trying to be mean to you. That's literally just me letting you know that you need to set your expectations in reality. It isn't you, it's the statistics. Okay, so I need you to know the difference of that. Um, you should be talking to enough people about this business opportunity that you don't know who you've talked to without checking your list, okay? If you can tell me off the top of your head, everybody who is on your like fence right now, you're not talking to enough people, like period. What happens in that same sense too, well, we only have a few people who are like on our fence that we're talking to, we end up getting desperate. <laughs> This is a huge mistake I used to make all the time. And we like harass them. We become that like clinger to them, right? I used to do that all the time. I would hear other SSDs or other people who were really, really good at recruiting. And they would say like, put them on your list, follow up with them every few months, but like, don't worry about them. Like, who cares? Like, just carry on. I'm like, what do you mean who cares? I only have three people to talk to Like, what are you saying? Like, I used to be so confused about that until I sort of like wrapped my head around the fact that like, oh, it needs to be an ongoing list. I can't literally depend on this person who said she might join four months ago. If like, she'll join when she's ready, basically. So if you can tell me off the top of your head who's on your list, you're not talking to enough people. So number two is you need to talk to more people and you need to track who you're talking to, okay? But like, don't harass. <clears throat> Uh, number three, people aren't joining your team because you're word vomiting all over them as soon as they show even a tiny bit of interest. Okay, we've all heard this before. None of this is new. <laughs> Hi, Hales. Um, if someone asks you a question and you answer it with a six page slideshow, that's probably too much, okay? Or if someone hasn't even asked you a question and you're telling them the breakdown of the compensation plan, that's probably too much. Or if someone has asked you, hi Haley, if someone has asked you um, what it takes to get started and you're telling them about that time that you went on a incentive trip, that's probably too much. Okay, so hi Gloria. No verbal diarrhea, okay? 
literally let them lead the conversation. So this is something, another lesson I've had to learn the last couple of years, you guys, is literally only answer the questions they ask, <laughs> okay? If you don't think they're not getting enough information, that's in your head. They are getting as much or as little information as they need to make the decision to join. You aren't signing them up to donate a kidney to you, okay? This isn't like a long-term life-altering decision, right? They're not getting a tattoo. They're not getting married, okay? Like, it's literally a side hustle. And with the host kits especially, they're probably not even investing a lot. But if someone only needs you to answer two questions and they're comfortable with paying $129, it isn't up to you to decide that that's too much to pay for without enough information, okay? I literally bought the kit within a day of thinking about it without ever even seeing a product in real life. And I was broke. Like I was a broke ass bitch. I was on maternity leave. I had no money. I literally spent our bill money to buy my starter kit because I thought it was a good idea. Like I thought this business was going to like at least get me through six months, which is all I needed it for at the time. Turns out it was a fantastic idea. <laughs> okay. But it's not up to you to decide how much or how little information people need in order to join. Okay. So only answer the questions they ask. That's it. All right. Um, sorry. Oh, no, he's talking to the kids. Okay, number four. People aren't joining your team because you aren't on fire for your business. You aren't excited about your business or, and or, you aren't excited about the opportunity you're offering, okay? If you aren't like pumped and amped and <laughs> enthusiastic about what you're offering, why on earth would they be? Like, that's just simple logic, right? You are literally offering them the opportunity. So if you are like ho-hum at best or um, like negative at worst, like, yeah, it's been okay. Like I've had a hard time selling lately, but like, like you might as well try. Like if that is your attitude, so why would someone be like, yeah, sounds great. Sign me up. How much again? Like no one is going to say that. They are going to like run away from you. Okay. Haley, what are you eating? I need to know. Is it ice cream? Jealous. <laughs> um, so if your conversations have any kind of negative connotations or even like a negative um, vibe or even your thoughts, you guys, and like I promise this isn't like woo woo stuff, okay? If you are thinking in your head that this opportunity might be negative or um, there's anything around it that could be like not the best ever, even if you're pretending <laughs> that it is, it's still going to come across. People are still going to catch your vibe whether you think it or not, okay? Or whether you think that they can or not. Um, and this goes for individual conversations and social media, and I'll get into a little bit later about social media. But basically, if you're not enthusiastic about what you're offering, if not, if you're not like best job ever, and like I love my life, blah 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 blah. Like if you're not like a crazy person about it, they're not going to even care. Like they're just not going to care. They'll either be turned off or they'll just like not care. So with either of those things you don't want, right? You want people like tuning into your social media feed. Does anyone else have like, does anyone else have people they follow either on Instagram or social media or I'm sorry, that is social media or Facebook or anything um, that you like go check their page? Because I do. I have a couple like sensitive people, not sensitive people. Like I have a couple different pages. I will literally go and like look at because they bring value, whether it's humor or um, good ideas or just whatever. You wanna be that person eventually. I am not that person, okay? That is something I have to work towards. I'm not saying that you have to exactly be like that, but don't be the opposite, <laughs> okay? There will, be, there will be people who you want to um, follow on social media, that there will be people who like, you're cool. Like if they come across your newsfeed, you're like, you'll, you'll double tap, you know, you'll give them a like. And then there'll be people who you either unfollow, snooze, or unfriend, which I've done a lot this past year. Don't be that person, okay? Um, 
which was my next thing. So I guess my tangent works out well. Your social media page or presence makes people want to do a U-turn. Okay. I realize your social media pages, your Facebook wall, your Instagram feed, they're yours. That's fine. You could do what you want, right? That's your personal opinion. You could put it out there if you'd like, but just know that it absolutely is affecting your business. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, I want to express my opinion about X, Y, and Z. And I also would like to build my Sensi business and recruit people. Nope, that's not going to happen. If you're posting certain things and you know the certain things I'm talking about, it will literally turn away 50% of the people. If you're okay with that, then you're okay with that. And you're okay with recruiting less people. Okay, that's just, you can't have it both ways. You can't have your ice cream and eat it too, okay? Um, also, if your social media is a commercial for Sensi, guys, that's also not good, okay? People follow you because they like you. People are already friends with you on Facebook and Instagram and that because they like you. If the minute you joined Sensi or the minute you started taking it seriously or wherever you are in your business, you turned into a literal commercial, people are going to snooze you so fast. That is one thing I did absolutely wrong when I joined, it was 2011. Facebook was fairly new to the general population. Um, like a couple of years in basically. I literally added every single person I knew and my husband knew to my VIP group, which was literally me posting like seven times a day about my products. Ugh. Like so, it was seriously so cringy. Um, so I made all of the mistakes back in the day, you guys, if your whole feed is literally just you posting about Sensi, people are going to not care anymore. They're going to be turned off, right? You have to have a little bit of a mix. 80, 20, it's what we say, right? 80, 80% 80 personal stuff, 20%, um, business stuff ish. Um, okay. Number six, and this is sort of the big one, you guys, and this will, Again, it's nothing new because recruiting isn't complicated. So you've heard it before, but you don't actually believe you can recruit or that you can lead once you recruit. This is going to be your biggest obstacle. So if you're doing all the first five steps right, if you're doing all of the other things that you've heard online and on YouTube and all the trainings, if you're doing all of those things right, but you still don't believe that you can recruit or that you can lead once you recruit, you're just not going to. I'm going to ask you guys to participate a little bit here in a second. I don't know how to change the views because you guys know how it is. No, oh, look at me changing it. Um, so what I heard, and this isn't the first time I've heard this quote, but I heard something the other day. It was Callie um, Petticourt was talking about it and she said, she repeated it over and over again. And I was like, this bitch is right. Okay, what you think about, you bring about. We've all heard that or some kind of variation of it, right? Um, but how many times have you actually like thought about what you were telling yourself or telling your upline or telling your friends and then literally comparing it to the results you're getting in your business? Because I bet you if we actually did some like inner work on that, <laughs> some little perspective, we might sort of go, oh, all right. Okay, well, there might be some truth to that, okay? So I want you guys to raise your hands, those of you without cameras, I guess throw it in the chat. If you tell yourself any of this, I suck at recruiting. You don't raise your hands, I'm calling you out, because every single one of us has told ourselves this, right? Recruiting is so hard for me. I haven't put it down yet. <laughs> I've told myself literally all of these things, raising hand patience says. Um, there's too many consultants around me or globally or in Ontario or wherever. If you've told yourself that ever, or I wish I could recruit like her, that's a big one for me, you guys, okay? Cheryl Beth, the leader of half the people in here, recruited 33 people in 2020. I thought I was doing all right, at like eight <laughs> and like not to say I'm not proud of her. I'm proud of her. 
But that little sneaky bitch on my shoulder said, well, you're not recruiting 33 people like her, right? It immediately like that traps you, right? Um, or my life is too blank to recruit right now. Crazy, hectic, I'm too tired, all of the things, okay? Or I've tried everything. I've talked to everyone and it's not working for me. I'm not seeing results. I've done it. Okay, if you are telling yourselves that, how the hell do you honestly think you're going to get results? You're literally throwing yourself a pity party with balloons and confetti and everything. You're never going to actually change your outcome if you are literally feeding negativity into your own mind. Even if it's true. <laughs> okay? And that's what we never talk about. Like, everyone always just says, well, just change your mind. Just say something different. And you're like, okay, but recruiting is hard for me, Kate. Like, what are you talking about, you psycho? Like, it actually is hard for me. So am I supposed to just say it's easy? Actually, yeah. <laughs> you kind of are. You are actually supposed to start telling yourself that you are good at recruiting. And that it is easy to, for you, or it comes easy to you. When you start changing your thoughts, your actions will actually start to change, you guys. We talk about, like why um, having a why is important, right? Having a reason to be doing this in the first place. So if you don't have a bigger dream out there, if you don't have a bigger goal out there other than like a leadership promotion or a paycheck, then you're not going to do the work necessary in order to hit those goals, right? It's the same thing with your mindset. If you don't actually think you can, do you think you're actually gonna go all in? Do you think you're going to burn your boats, right? You're gonna have plan B, C, D, and E lined up for yourself because you don't actually think plan A will work. Where if you start to change your mind and you say, actually, plan A is my only way. I'm burning the bridges back there. I'm burning the boats. There is no plan B. Then you're going to try so much harder. Your actions are going to be a thousand percent different. So you need to start literally telling yourself a different story. Tony knows all about this. She listens to the same podcast I do. He talks about the red light and green light stories. And this is literally like how many, um, what are they called, Tony, where he brings in people and they talk about how they've like totally changed their business in the last blah, blah years, right? None of those things <laughs> ever, ever revolve around doing a certain task. It literally always starts with them telling themselves a different story. Like always, like it becomes annoying. We're like, okay, great. I guess I just have to be more positive, <laughs> right? Which is like, oh, we could be doing all of the things right, you guys. You could be literally like by the book on what you're supposed to be doing with recruiting. But if your mind is still telling you that you suck at recruiting, then you're going to suck at recruiting, period, okay? I'm going to actually ask you guys, what are some different stories you can start telling yourselves? And you know that I will sit here and make it awkward, so you better answer. <laughs> patience. <laughs> okay, patience, truth, and anybody who knows me, I don't really like people like I do but I'm an introvert you guys like I don't like people like that like after this I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna go on my phone and I'm going to d people for an hour and a half by playing dumb games so I promise you don't have to be like a peoply person in order to succeed promise okay what else what are you guys gonna start telling yourselves Teresa, I was just to catch you up real quick. I was just talking about how we talk to ourselves like I suck at recruiting or recruiting is hard for me or my life's too busy to recruit that we're just going to continue to see those same results. So we have to tell ourselves different stories. Just to catch you up. Did Cohen just go to sleep? Love you. <laughs> oh, hard. 
Guys, Teresa hasn't slept in over a year. Like here and there she slept. She's had a couple hours in 12 months. So I'll make it awkward. Yeah. Guys. I'm not carrying on until someone replies. I, I think that people just need to just do it. Go out there and just do it. Like that's for me, I get caught up in like, I haven't done it in so long. I haven't asked people, I haven't done anything. And I go into this cycle of like, I'm not asking people because I haven't done it in so long. I feel out of practice. I feel like I can't do it. Um, and I think once I just change my mind, okay, I'm just going to do it, even though I haven't done it in forever, even though it feels awkward, even though it doesn't feel right, I'm just going to do it. And then when I start doing it, then I succeed. So, okay. Yes. So don't unmute yourself yet. Cause you're going to talk again next in a second. So <laughs> What she is saying, guys, is literally what I just said, right? Like if she is telling herself the story of like, well, I haven't talked to someone in so long. What if I'm mad at it now? Or what if, what if no one even wants to hear from me because I haven't followed up in three months? Those are all red light stories. Those are all in our heads. That isn't the actual truth. It's the truth we think we're telling ourselves, right? And then when she actually like, we talked, what was it about a month ago, Teresa? Gloria, I see you unmuted too. I haven't, I'm not going to surpass you or bypass you. Um, it was about a month ago and Teresa and I were having a conversation like this and I was just saying like just, just do it and she's like all right bitch I'm gonna go do it and she did <laughs> so tell us the results of what happened with that do you remember that uh yeah I had a hostess um a hostess kit that I wanted to get rid of I had a 665 dollar party um so I had a kit that was entirely free so I just started reaching out to people and I don't remember the numbers at this point, Kate, I think I reached out to 15 people and I got back five people that had show, didn't say no. So people that showed interest, I had one point person join that, that day. Um, and then I had another person that was like, I'd like to host a party and do this myself. That way I'm hitting my shooting or my, yeah, my shooting star. Cause I had explained things to her. I had another person say, I'm interested, put me on your list. The next time you have a free kit. Uh, actually, I had two people that said that. So I just had, a, a, and then I had other people that were like, yeah, it's not right for me right now. And I said, do you want me to put you on my, my pending list? And they were like, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. So we just decide to be like, all right, I'm in, <laughs> just going to do it. I'm just going to go for it. Like, look yeah. at the results we can actually get. And I think with the hostess kit, it's a really good, like incentivizing thing for people. Like I don't actually have to you know, come up that with the hundred and whatever, 54 bucks it ends up being. Um, I don't have to come up with that money. I can just join right now and I can, you know, so I think, I think that's helpful to people too. 100%, no risk, right? Yep. Okay, Gloria, what were you going to say? Oh, I still can't hear you. Can anyone hear her? Still can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. Can you unplug maybe? For me? Yeah. Good now. Okay. Sorry. So girl. I had to take these crappy headphones out. I apologize, guys. <laughs> so okay. I am always telling myself I'm going to follow up. I'm going to follow up. And I never do. Like I very rarely, I just last week downloaded on um, the Amy app because at first I didn't like it, but I realized writing it down, putting it in my cell phone does nothing, does nothing for me. Yeah. Um, and I find that it's really helpful and I'm being more consistent, but for everything else, like if I don't know something, I reach out to Sabrina, but I usually just go balls deep and dive right in there. Like I, if I do something, I can't half it. I have to like, you know, I got to go for it or I don't do it. And yeah. I expect to have success, but I plan for if it doesn't, what can I do to make it better? And I'm always reevaluating everything. When I do parties, when I make posts, I'm always reevaluating myself and how I'm doing things because I don't know any other way, right? That's, but people just have to like dive there. Yeah, you just have to at least go for it. So having a plan B as far as if this doesn't work, what can I do to make it better is- Okay, here's a good example. Yeah. Um, I have been from the beginning trying to reach my 500 PRV. I have been at this for almost a year. I am hopeful. I am going to hit it. It's when it'll happen. It'll happen. So I'm like, well, if it's not doing it, what am I going to do to make this happen? So I've been reaching out to more people instead of just posting. 
I've been engaging with other people's posts where I have great people skills and I can talk to anyone, but I really dislike people if that makes sense. But yet yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell. It's so like I could sell mud to a pig. <laughs> like, you know, I have to be, I don't really like to engage in people's things that I don't know unless it's of interest. Um, but I've been learning that that is essential for me to build quite like a relationship. And I've realized this with Leap to Lead and all the training videos and things that it's not just important for me to get my stuff out there, but I have to engage and I have to get people's attention. But to do that, I have to interact with them and care about their situations or, you know, things that they post when really at the end of the day, like that doesn't pay my bills. I don't care. I know that sounds negative and I, I apologize to anyone if that does, but it's I've been doing awesome. things on my own for so long and I run another business, right? So I don't have time for, I have to be more consistent and engage. And that's another pro a struggle is the engaging with people. I've been working on it the last two weeks and I've noticed a little bit better. And I keep telling myself, well, we're going to go message people today or we're going to go and comment on this post because you like this. And I feel better doing it, but essentially, I don't know. Honestly, I don't care. So and here's the thing, honestly, you guys, I find, especially with entrepreneurs, like I'll, I'll guarantee almost half the room, if not more than half the room would like totally relate to that. It is why us leaders tell you guys, you have to be intentional with reaching out to people you have to be intentional with commenting under other people's social media posts some of us it's because we have a hard time caring because we're so hard in the hustle right it's not that you literally don't give a crap about human beings ever it's because you're so hard driven to your own goal right like that's literally how i am too where i have to remind myself kate you have to be a good friend today like literally Haley's one of my best friends and i'll be like I haven't talked to this bitch in two weeks. I need to go check on her and her kids. Like I forget to reach out to people because I'm so in my own like zone. That's why and, we're friends. It's, yeah, because she like, I, I'm like, oh, she has not I could care less. <laughs> it's fine, right? Like, and that's the thing. And I really do find that it is a, um, a common thread with entrepreneurs because we just have, and I hate the word hustle, you guys. I hate, it sounds so like 2018, like hashtag, but it's, true right we we usually are just like going after it and in the zone and in our jobs right which means we're in our heads and if you have kids or other priorities or other responsibilities going on in your life even if it's um, other fun things to do those are probably going to be at the top of your list so i'm actually really glad that you said that gloria and i love that when people actually show up authentically like that because it allows others permission to be their authentic selves as well so let's just like clap for Gloria. That was awesome. Thank you. Well, for I had a friend of mine, she had messaged me and she's now a Love Wings consultant. Um, but she's like, you know what, Gloria? She's like, can I ask you some questions? I'm like, yeah, like, go ahead. And she was asking me about business. And I gave her some pointers of tips and tricks on how I find that Oh, we're losing you now. I don't know where you just said. What I do works for me. And I gave her some to guide. I'm like, do what you want. But here I see how you're always consistent. That was it. You're always consistent. And I see all the stuff that you post and you're always happy and this and that. And I'm like, <laughs> you're totally okay. breaking up, Gloria. Okay. You're like, we're losing you. I you're doing so well and so successful. I'm thinking, see my internet. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever you just went. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Go back to where you were. Okay. <laughs> I'm beside my modem. Yeah, there you go. That's the key spot. You stay there. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, so she was saying like, oh, I see how you know, you're doing so well with your business. You're consistently posting. She's like, I like how you're running your business and, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, thank you. Like, that's really nice. Um, so I gave her some pointers and she's doing pretty well for herself. And she's like, well, would you be upset if I didn't join your team? I said, no, we're, we've been friends for years. Like why, if you want tips to run your own business, it's not like I gave her my secrets. 
You know what I'm saying? I gave her, if I had a team, I'm going to give them the same information that I possibly can and make them successful. And I don't care. She's not a Sensi consultant. She's a friend and I support her. And if she's like, hey, you're successfully running this business and Sensi, like I see what you're doing. You're constantly doing this every day. And I see that and it's inspiring. And I'm like, thank you. And I said, well, what would you like? We talked into more details and um, I told her one thing that I learned is engaging with customers or just people in general and showing an interest. And I realized after saying that, that that's true. And it wasn't until the middle of leap to lead where it was like, ding. Right. Oh, that's, you know. Right. Apparently that's important. <laughs> right. Apparently building relationships is actually. It is. Yeah. Yeah. But like everything that you just told us, but how you literally helped your friend and she, that's like gives you no rewards, tells me that you do care about people. So let's just clarify. I, I, okay. I care about my, my circle and I'm always will, I'm always respectful to anybody. I don't even care who you are. You'll always have a polite, respectful me. Um, but I you know, random people it's, to go out of my way to be like, oh, I don't really care. Like if it doesn't show up on my feed, I don't want to go out of my way to search it. And that's where the problem lies. So I've been trying my darndest to work on this. Yeah. So you have to be intentional about it. If it's not something that comes natural. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I've been a little, the last two days, I have been really intentional on my audience. Um, especially when I was running a party, um, I had to call Sabrina for help because the girl didn't understand. And she was, and I'm, I'm please, no one take this the wrong way. She was one of those annoying people that I'd rather sit with a disabled ADHD person and like converse with them because they have like a mentality you can talk to and they get things. This girl was like a massive bouncy ball and all weekend she had me change like a hundred different things and I was trying to like do my own thing and I'm telling her you know if things change every five minutes did someone order do I get my points and I'm like if anything changes I will tell you <laughs> we're good right now and I couldn't figure out how I was getting frustrated because patience is not my strong suit you can ask my kids I have a certain amount of patience and they know when not to push it and I warn anyone before I lose my patience, I'll say I'm getting impatient or you're pissing me off. And I wanted to say this to her and I wanted to be like, don't you effing get it? Like this is, but I did it. And I'm like, okay, hey, how do I present myself in a professional, polite manner when I tried? So I'm like, Sabrina, she's like, just call. So after like an hour of this girl um, helping me, yeah, we figured it out and it was okay, but it was a struggle. I need patience. Yes. Okay, guys. Yes, yes. you guys can watch. Yes. I'm trying to try to think where are we. Okay, we were on. Thank you for sharing. Okay, I just want to um sort of get wrapped up in this because it's already nine oh four, and I want to let people go within a normal amount of time. But like, feel you. We've all been there. Okay, we've all like had those situations. So thank you for sharing. Okay. So we were on, how do you sort of change those negative red light stories you tell yourself? I think Teresa and Gloria touched on a lot of that, to be totally honest, but just know how important it is to literally do that. You guys, I know that you hear it constantly from leaders, from other leaders that you learn about, from other things you watch on YouTube or podcasts you might listen to. Um, but trust me from someone who has gone through major hills and then even worse valleys in her business in the last nine and a half years, the times that my business has either taken a nosedive or just um, gone steady, which you don't really even want to do either, like you want to be growing, um, is when my mindset is in a dumpy place. Okay. It's when I'm telling myself all of those dumpy stories, Teresa and I have these conversations with each other constantly because we get sucked into those dumpy places very, very easily. <laughs> okay. So just make sure that if you are not recruiting and this goes for any topic in your business. Okay. So if you aren't recruiting consistently or as much as you'd like, or all of the things, 
if your sales aren't as high as you would hope that they were like all of the things, right? If you aren't booking parties, ask yourself what you're telling yourself, ask yourself how you're talking to yourself lately. And if it's anything like I suck at, or it's hard to, or, um, I wish I could. <laughs> okay. Those are the things you are going to literally bring about. You're literally trapping yourself in a circle, a shitty circle. Okay. That's what you're doing to yourself. Um, you're, you're basically like giving yourself an outcome before you even have it. And then you're going to half ass try because you've already told yourself what's going to happen in the end. So you're only going to like do as much as you need to, which might be talking to one person this month. And then they say no. And then you go, well, see, no one wants to join my team. Everyone I've asked said no. <laughs> That's going to be true if you talk to one to 20 people. Okay. Um, I really want you to stop like on this same set. And then I'm going to give you some just like, or give you guys some just like quick tips on how to actually like recruit. Okay. Um, but I really want you to stop telling yourself that recruiting is hard. It's not hard. Literally the only thing that's hard about it is being consistent enough to actually see results. Okay. That's hard. Being consistent is hard. Let's start telling ourselves the truth. Okay, consistency is hard. Being consistent is hard. Doing the things that we have to do in order to grow our businesses consistently is hard. Recruiting, just the act of recruiting, that's not hard. It's literally a conversation, but it's a conversation over and over and over and over again. Okay, but the actual act of recruiting isn't the hard part. So I want you to stop telling yourself that story. So if you're going to write down any notes tonight, if you're going to remember a single thing from tonight, I want you to write in all caps, highlight it, circle it, draw little bubbles around it. Recruiting is not hard. Okay. <clears throat> Talk to enough people, stay positive, rinse and repeat. You just got to do that over and over and over again. Okay. Now, some actual tips on recruiting. And then I'm going to talk really, really quickly, you guys, um, about what to do once you recruit. I'm not gonna go too deep into this, um, but tips on um, once you recruit and recruiting, okay? Mm, yeah, host kits, like Teresa said, so I, again, I won't delve too deep into it though, is so important to offer them. It is the way that the majority of people are joining Sensi these days. Okay, less than 50% of people are joining with a $129 kit. It doesn't mean nobody is, so like still offer it. But the majority of people are joining through the host kits. So if you aren't offering the host kit, at least the $77 version of the host kit, with every single party you close, whether it's like your own things um, that you've collected or another host, like literally I had a host, we just closed last night, um, she had a party that was over 665, I'm going to obviously let her have her rewards because that's her party, but I still offered the host kit at her party. And I was just going to offer it at $77. So I was going to let her use $99 and 75 cents or whatever it was. And I was going to use that last quarter to enter the host kit. Okay. So if you're not doing that with every single party you close, you're missing out on opportunities to offer the opportunity. Okay. Um, don't overthink your actual conversations. So if you're stopping yourself from having recruiting conversations because dot, 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 like, because I don't care, like for any literal reason, stop overthinking it. Okay. You literally just have to be yourself. I will never give you a script on what to say, because what you're going to say is going to be different than something I am going to say. Stop overthinking it. Do you think by head nods that the sensing opportunity is a good opportunity? Yes, then go tell people about it, period. Okay, stop overthinking that. Um, be authentic. This is also from Teresa. Be authentic in your conversations. Okay, it goes along that same, um, same vibe, okay? Like just don't worry about it so much. Don't worry what Andy Teeter is saying to people. 
Don't wonder what Katie Farner is saying to people. Don't worry about what Jenna Anderson is saying to people. What are you saying to people? Literally, just say something to people, <laughs> okay? You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. If someone wants to join your team, if someone is geared up to join your team, there's almost no way you can screw that up, okay? Unless you're completely offensive. But if you're just worried about saying the wrong thing, as in like, did I give them information? No, don't worry about it. That won't matter. Unless you literally tell them that like their mom is ugly and whatever, whatever. Okay, like just don't offend them, <laughs> okay? You can't say the wrong thing to the right people. Um, now, for what to do once you actually recruit, again, we're gonna just bang through these real quick, okay? All of this is going to seem really obvious, you guys, but I just really want you to just carry on with me, okay? Um, help them launch, duh. Sensi's first goal is the shooting star. Now, why I say duh to this? Nothing is different than from when you joined, okay? The new consultant awards, the new consultant guide, all of those things, they're still the same. So you just need to teach them to do what you did or what you wish you did. Okay, so their first goal, shooting star. The best way to do that, a launch party. You help them set up their launch. You tell them their goal is 500 PRV. You don't ask them what their goal is, because guess what? They're already going to be like totally scared shitless that they just made this decision to launch a new business. And if you ask them what their goal is, they're going to give you the most bare minimum goal they can think of. So you are the expert, even if you joined yesterday, you're still the one who's a little bit more <laughs> experienced than they are, okay? So you tell them their goal is 500 PRV, which in Canada, of course, is 665. So that works out to 500 PRV, they get their shooting star award, they get a certificate, they get a charm, they get a chance to get that kit, they get a $132 paycheck, they get four half price items, and they think that's it. $100 in free product, did I say that already? Okay, there's a whole lot of stuff lined up for them if they get that 500 PRV award. That's what you tell them, that's what you're going for, period. <clears throat> you show them how to double promote within their launch party. So you tell them, girlfriend, if you hit 665, you're going to get $100 in free credit. Did you know that you can use some or all of that to help one of your besties join you? You worry about the details after they go, what? You can sort of dig into like how to actually tell them how to promote to lead, but you can tell them you'll have a better chance at double promoting almost right off the bat. If you help one of your besties join with you with your launch party and they go, does that mean I have to give out some of my stuff? And you go, yeah, sometimes, but that's what we do in Sensi, right? We're generous. We give more than we take. Literally, that's what I did with my second last recruit. And she was like, it's on. And she did. She actually gave that person an entirely free kit. I didn't even tell her to do that. And she was just like, all right, cool. And she did. So you just never know. And they don't know that they have the option unless you, who are their sponsor, tell them that. Okay. So you have to just literally like lead the reins in this instance. Um, then guys, after their first 15 days, since he literally still sets up them up for success, right? So we still have the sensational start, which gets us to the first 70 days. Help them set a goal for their sensational start. I always, unless this person has done like shit all since the first day, I always tell them to go for at least level two because that's where the free warmer is. Like that's literally the only reason I tell them. Yes, the free product credit like increases, increases significantly with level two and three. But honestly, that free warmer that you can't actually buy as a customer or as a consultant, like that's where the money is, right? So I just tell them, I tell them again, like I don't tell them where their goal is this time because now they're a little bit more seasoned. But I just say like level two or three, what are, what's going on here? And then I literally break down the remaining PRV for them and just help them decide what their next goal is. So if they hit that first shooting star, then I go, okay, well, if your level two is this, then you need this much PRV, which works into this much per week, which is this many parties per week. And then I tell them, if you flip just one of those parties, 
in the next 55 days, then you actually cut your needed PRV in half. Boom. Like it's literally just that simple. You don't have to overcomplicate this. After their first 70 days, thanks Gloria. After their first 70 days, how you're going to train them and carry on is literally going to be um, dependent on them and their energy, okay? So I'm going to give you a couple more goals there too. I have them set a financial goal right up front. So if they tell me they want to launch their party or sorry, their business. Um, so basically I give my brand new recruits two options. Launch, AKA be successful, <laughs> earn actual paychecks, right? Earn your starter kit costs back or don't launch. Cause I have lots of people joining lately just for a personal discount. And some people are like, don't even talk to me. Like I'm just gonna be here to, for my own stuff. Okay, if they choose launch, I'm going to have them set an actual financial goal right off the bat because money talks. Shooting star, sensational star, all those things are super important, um, but it doesn't change their lives. And I'm not talking about, like I posted um, yesterday today in the T page, you guys, I'm not talking about like becoming a millionaire and like losing your second job and blah, 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 blah. I'm literally talking about like, if you can make your cell phone payment this month without having to skip your hydro payment this month, that's life-changing to some people. Okay. So actual money conversations matter. Even if it's literally just be like, I have an Amazon addiction. I would like to keep that addiction without being divorced. That's life-changing to some people. So talk money with them right off the bat, and that's going to get them excited about their business going forward, okay? Um, here's a huge thing that every leader is going to run into at one time or another. Do not put more energy into their business than they do. That is probably the hardest, <laughs> Teresa is like breaking her neck. Um, <laughs> that is the hardest thing to do as a leader, period. It's like the hardest lesson I've had to learn. Do not drag around the dead weight, okay? And the people who do not give energy back, I'm not saying they are worthless as humans and they should be stripped from the planet, of course not but this is a business, okay? And if I am giving more energy to the people who just don't have it for their own businesses, then I am leaving behind the people who do deserve it. And that's not fair. I'm also spending time with people who don't have energy for their own business rather than spending time with my family or my damn self. And that's not fair either. So do not give more energy to people who aren't giving energy to their own business, okay? And I will tell you guys, numbers and effort don't lie, okay? So sometimes you'll see it in the workstation. Most times you'll see it in the workstation. Their numbers won't lie. Sometimes you're going to see it with their effort because they are going to be coming to you and they're going to be telling you about the consistent things they're doing. And sometimes those seeds just take a while to be <laughs> blossomed. That was a terrible word. Bloomed, I guess. Okay. Um, you, yourself, need, and this came from Teresa as well, another tip. You need to set a goal for 2,000 PRV a month. You need to. If you are not, and I'm not saying you have to sell 2,000 PRV a month. You need to at least set that goal for 2,000 PRV a month. Because if you're only selling 500, even a thousand PRV a month. You're just not talking to enough people in order to grow your business. Guys, I'm gonna be totally transparent here. This is scary because this is recording. So I'm gonna have this on the internet forever. My PRV last month was like 760. I know that's probably not shocking. Like, to, can you, like who cares? That was the lowest PRV I've had in, I don't know, years, years. Cause I was just like, it's fine. I actually flipped a party. <laughs> So I think that's why I justified it because I flipped a party that was over a thousand PRV. So I planned on having 1700 and I flipped that. But when I flipped it, I was like, I guess that's fine. Like I just didn't try harder. That's not okay. Those are not the months that you're going to like see major success when you go, that's enough for now. That's good enough for me. 
good enough should never be good enough. I sound like a kindergarten teacher, but like, that's true. So you need to actually set the goal for 2000 PRV a month, whether or not you hit it, just the act of going after it is going to force you into the taking the actions and doing the tasks that someone who sells 2000 PRV does. That's the only difference. You're going to talk to that many people just by trying to get to 2000 PRV a month. Right, Teresa, do you have anything to add on to that before I move on? No. Um, I think that's it. Those were all my tips. I kind of went in like a weird order because I went to the, the other tips after, but does anyone else have anything to add? I know Teresa, you missed out on, on some of it because of the baby. But do you guys have anything to add or any other questions or concerns? Is there still an area that you're like um, feeling like weak in or you're worried about that I didn't touch on or I didn't yell at you enough about? Can I just say one thing? No. When I, when I would, stop. When I was, um, when I first started recruiting, someone said this to me and it made it easier for me to do it. Instead of like trying to like, skirt around the subject just flat out ask someone have you ever thought about doing what I do have you ever thought about making money did you say this already no no okay yeah have you ever thought about making money with Sensi have you ever you spend so much already why don't you just do this <laughs> like just like simple one-liners where people are like oh I never thought about that or I have thought about that and I've been interested but I would no one's ever asked me so it's just getting out and just spitting that one liner out might help you. That's all I want to say. Yeah, I think that's what you did a month ago, isn't it? Isn't that what you said? Hey, I have this free kit. Have you ever thought about doing this? I think it's what you said. Yep. Yeah. And it goes back I, to, sorry. No, you should be, but I go said this, I'm not <laughs> anymore. Uh, a few people on my Facebook have joined Sensi under other people that I could have asked, but I didn't, and then regretted it. I know, heartbreaking, right? And it's people that have maybe bought from me once or twice before, and I never followed up. And it, it's just heartbreaking when you see that they join and you're like, bitch, please. Right, because like <laughs> someone else literally just asked them. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's just ask. Yeah. Just ask. Just ask, and that's it, guys. And and I've said this before, and I'll like, I'll, I'll wrap up with this, I guess, is when it's not about you, it's not about you. So when you don't make it about you, when you're asking them, because you genuinely think that it can help them, if they say no, it doesn't matter. Because it's about them in the first place. Sabrina, yes, I can relate to that. Like, that's the thing. It's on, it's, it's for them. So if they say no, then that's like, it shouldn't even affect you. You shouldn't even feel sad about it because it wasn't about you in the first place, right? So if you just ask them, like Teresa said, or Haley said, like, hey, have you ever thought about doing this? And they say no, you're not gonna go get your feelings hurt because it was for them in the first place. Like it shouldn't even matter to your like feels, okay? So literally stop telling yourself you suck because I know all of you are stop telling yourself it's hard because I know all of you are saying that and literally go ask the people and go ask way more people <laughs> that's also key okay so if you tell me you're bad at it and you say Kate I've, I've done all the things you say and I'm, it's still not working you better have a freaking list of people you've talked to to show me when you complain to me that it's not working, period, okay? Because I'll tell you guys, like I said, I recruit, I literally checked it today so I can tell you guys, I recruited 12 people since April, 2020 to April, 2021. I've recruited 12 people. Those 12 people did not consistently come one month after another, like clockwork, they came in batches. Sometimes that's just because that's just what happens. But most of the time, it's because of the months I wasn't recruiting. It's because I wasn't doing the things I needed to do. And I wasn't talking to enough people. 
right? I got on my own head and I just wasn't reaching out. I wasn't asking enough people. So that's just all it comes down to you guys. If you're not recruiting, it's because you're just not talking to enough people. And you're probably not talking to enough people because you've probably already told yourself that you're incapable of recruiting. So you just really have to like circle back and fix that right from the get-go. Your therapy session has ended. I'm going to end the recording. <laughs>